morning, New Vision family. It's us again. I pray that you guys have had a blessed week. We are so excited about today's worship experience. I absolutely can't wait. And it is Pentecost Sunday. So we're expecting a fresh wind from the Holy Spirit. And we want you to invite that wind right into your worship space at home, your bedroom, your living room, your kitchen, wherever you are, invite the move of the Holy Spirit in with you. Let's get into it. Hallelujah, God. Let's press into his presence. Come on, God. Come on, y'all. Let's press into his presence because he's good. Let's press because he's worthy. Despite what is going on, God is good. The press that's in our body. God gave it to us. He asked it. We just give it back to him. My brokenness. I've got true love instead of pain. There's freedom though you captured me. I've got joy instead of just being absolutely amazing. Despite how we feel, 
so good Lord you've been so good when I look back over my life Lord you've been so good how you've healed my body Lord God, you've been so good. How you saved my soul, God, you've been so good. How you continue to forgive me, God, you've been so good. How you continue to provide, you So good. How you deliver, God? So good. My God, my God. You've been so good to me. Now is the time in our service where we can give back to God a portion of what he's given to us. I have a scripture this morning. It comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10, and it reads, Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. In other words, giving doesn't just benefit the recipient but it also benefits the giver as well. In this season where there is such lack and so many people are in need, believers in God should be prompted and moved to give. Give to your neighbor, give to your family, give to your friends, give to the body of Christ so that we may meet the need in the community. At this time, Pastor Sean Taylor pray over our gifts. Father, we present these gifts to you. God, we ask that you would bless it. God, that you would break them down. Now we have a special guest who's going to be bringing the word of God on today. He's no stranger to New Vision. He's no stranger to the Fredericksburg area. We have none other than Richard Davis, who's going to bless us with a mighty word on this Pentecost Sunday. Because you deserve it. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You, Lord, you are worthy. And no one can worship you for me. For all the You've done for me, and no one can worship you for me. Here's my worship, all of my worship. Receive my worship, all of my worship. Here's my worship, all of my worship, receive my worship, all of my worship.
High New Vision Online. I hope you are doing well today on this wonderful Pentecost Sunday. It's your friend here, Richard Davis, bringing you greetings from Strong Tower Church, uh, where my pastor, Pastor Jeffrey Smith, gives his hello and well wishes to all of you. A major thank you for this opportunity to my very best friends in the entire world that mean a lot to me, y'all. So yes, I'm their protecting squad, so be careful. Uh, pastors Aaron and Shante Anderson, I love you with my whole heart, and I'm so thankful to be able to share with you all today. Well, we're online, so that means you're not here in the seat, so I don't have a whole lot of preliminaries for you. I don't want to take up all your time, so I want to cut right to it. Are you ready? Here we go. If you're turning your Bibles to Acts chapter 1, or on your phones, or on your tablets, or you can just look at the screen, because it's going to scroll up here in just a second. Uh, Acts chapter 1. And I want to begin reading at verse 4. Are you ready? Acts chapter 1. And I'm going to be reading at verse 4. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. I want to fast forward a little bit now to verse 12. Same chapter, chapter 1, but verse 12. And it reads as thus. 
Then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey. And when they had entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying. Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simeon, Zelot, and Judas, the son of James. Wow. Whew, I don't think they were social distancing. That's a lot of names right there. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Let's fast forward now to Acts chapter 2. Just move one chapter over. There we go. And I'm going to start at verse 1. Are you ready? <laughs> it's all right to have some fun this morning, right? Here we go. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And the Bible says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. I want to speak to you this morning from the subject, trust issues. From the subject, trust issues. Today is the Sunday that we set aside to commemorate Pentecost Sunday. Today, churches across the world are, you know, used to singing songs of praise, songs about the Holy Ghost. There's usually dancing, uh, there's rejoicing, there's shouting. Uh, it's a different type of Pentecost Sunday, though, this Sunday, uh, because as you all very well know, we're all sitting uh, at home. We're all at home. We're celebrating the Holy Ghost. We're celebrating the coming of the promise. But we're doing it from home. As I was studying and, and, and thinking and, and praying with God, I, I had some thoughts a while back. When I was a young boy growing up in church, I uh, grew up in a Baptist church, and I remember uh, watching people run around and jump up and down and shout and fall in the floor and and then I would go with my grandmother to the holiness church at night and I, I used to think they would go blah 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 and I'm like oh wow they can speak Chinese or they can speak Japanese Spanish and that's how I learned it I you know to me that's how I learned uh from a child the Holy Ghost but as I got older I realized I saw myself doing some of the very same things that I saw as a child Y'all remember that Shirley Caesar uh, story when she used to talk about, how, how'd she say it? Stop playing with him, stop playing with him, stop playing with him. It's going to catch you, and then one day it caught her. That's kind of what it was like for most of us. Most of us that grew up in church, uh, we saw uh, and we learned from what we saw, and then one day all of a sudden it hit us. But let's talk about that hit. What was that like? You know, for many of us, uh, we had to learn that the Holy Ghost is much more than the shaking, the gyrating, the tears, the falling out, the foaming at the mouth, the speaking in Japanese, Chinese, or gibberish, or Ebonics, whatever you want to call it. The Holy Ghost is much more than that. And for a lot of us, yes, we have it down. We got the jargon down and we got the jerks down and we got the shakes down. And we know some of the emotional responses, but we do not know how to respond to the presence of God being in our rooms. For many of us, it's a struggle not just to know what it's like dealing with the presence of God in the room, but dealing with the presence of God being on the inside of us. We're still struggling, most of us, to live day today somehow in some way we are connected to emotionalism and that we still find ourselves disconnected from the conviction i quickly learned the difference between being baptized and filled with the holy spirit and just having the symptoms of emotionalism see the holy ghost is a comforter let me give you the example just like your mother you came out of your mother's womb and with those hands she held you with those hands she gave you the first baby bottle with those hands 
she changed your diaper and she wiped your face with those hands when you fell off your bike she picked you up and she patched up your boo-boo come on you know those hands with those hands she hugged you but as you got older with those same hands she gave you a pop when you said the wrong thing she gave you a smack when you got out of alignment and those same hands that would comfort were the same hands that would correct us see the Holy Ghost is more than just my emotionalism but the Holy Ghost is my comforter he is my teacher and he's more than my next shout and my next cheer but he is my conscience he is the thing that leads and guides me it's the Holy Ghost so if you're going to have the Holy Ghost you got to take all of them on take nothing you can't decide what you're going to take from the Holy Ghost you can't decide one day he's going to be your comfort one day he's going to give you peace but when he tells you don't do that all of a sudden he ain't your Holy Ghost somebody put in that chat box you got to take all of it you got to take all of it so in the New Testament after the ascension of Christ looking back at our text you will see several accounts where it says to be baptized or to be filled with the spirit in the text we see that the disciples Mary and the mother of Jesus went into an upper room and they waited I'd like to take a few minutes if I can to just walk this out I promise I won't be before you your screen long I'm just going to give you a few things to think about and then I'll be off the screen out of your way but I want to talk about that upper room for a few moments I want to talk about the word upper when I went to look it up, it literally popped out at me as saying this meaning an exalted place or an elevated place or position. Upper. An exalted place, an elevated place or position. They waited for the coming of the Holy Spirit in an exalted place and in an elevated position. And I find that many times when God really wants to talk to us or deliver something special, he does not like doing it from a commonality place or position of thinking, but he likes to raise our levels of awareness and our levels of thinking to an exalted place or position. What are you talking about, preacher? Well, let me bring to your remembrance the story of Moses. When he went to talk to Moses and give him the Ten Commandments, he thought him out from the people and brought him out from the place he knew and took him to an elevated place. Come on, y'all know that story. This is the same place where he asked to see the Lord and God said, I can't, you can't look on me and live, but I'll hide you in the cleft of this mountain and you can see my glory as it passes by. Moses was in an elevated place. And the thing that is special about an elevated place is when God brings you to an elevated or exalted place it changes everything about you that was you before you got there y'all know how Moses looked the Bible said when Moses left the mountain he was all grayed out he looked different than when he went up the mountain and that's okay because I realize what happens is when God brings me from the place I knew the place that was my normal into a new normal into an elevated place he causes those things that need to mature in me to change and grow up look at somebody and say an elevated place four things I want to give you today that God wants elevated are you ready if you're taking notes I'm gonna give you four things here we go number one he wants our perspective elevated uh -huh. number two he wants our thoughts elevated yeah number three our emotions elevated and number four our expectations God wants elevated I'm gonna give you to you again are you ready number one he wants our perspective elevated he he wants our thoughts elevated, our emotions elevated, and our expectations elevated. And I find the problem not in God meeting us in the elevated place. I find the problem for us is actually us getting to the elevated place because it's a trust deal it's a trust deal it's a trust deal I'm going to show you in another text hear the word of the Lord here Psalms 33 verse 16 through 19 in the NLT version reads this are you ready here it goes the best equipped army cannot save a king nor is great strength enough to save a warrior don't count your war horse to give you victory for all its strength it cannot save you but the Lord, I love it when the Bible ever comes back and says, 
but the Lord. But the Lord watches over those who fear him and he watches over you and those who rely in his unfailing love. The Bible then closes it off in verse 19 and says he rescues them from death and also keeps them alive in times of famine. In times of famine, he will keep you alive. So the question, New Vision, I was charged to ask you today is this, while you are sitting in your homes and sitting with your families in COVID-19 isolation and quarantine, why do you still have trust issues with the Lord? Are you still waiting for things to get back to what you think normal is? You may be in the position of a new normal. And some of you might even say, I don't have trust issues with God. I trust him in my life. Well, congratulations for you. But the problem is you don't realize what you have trust issues because they show up in your blind side. They show up in the parts of you that you cannot necessarily see in the morning when you wake up. And the problem is you don't see them, but every else around you in your trusted circle does. But you don't listen to anybody in your circle, do you? You only listen to them when they're patting you on the back or when they're saying you're doing a great job or when they're saying this is wonderful. But when our brother or our sister comes to us in trust, in confidentiality, in private to say, hey, let me talk to you about this. Your slip is showing. We get defensive and get an attitude and begin to fight those that God has entrusted to help to keep us. I'm talking about trust issues today. Uh, see, I'm going to go down the line on you. If you got issues tithing, you got trust issues. Uh -huh. If you got issues listening to your pastors and leaders, you got trust issues. If you got issues trusting the gifts and talents that are within you that you have not let out yet, you got trust issues. If you lean on your own strength before leading on the Lord, you have trust issues. If you find yourself severely opinionated on issues and your opinion is not in the word of God, it's not written anywhere in the 66 books my friend you have trust issues if you find yourself fighting and bickering back and forth with those you claim to be your brother and sister all the time in controversy beloved I'm here to tell you we got trust issues guess what those are also screaming symptoms that you need to get a test because more than likely you are test trust 33 positive You need to get a test because something is off like Psalms 33 says you trust in your own strength before you trust in the Lord you will trust in your own judgment before you will trust in the Lord that the Bible says to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path I remember hearing my grandmother miss her so much she used to sing old songs in the church and I remember hearing her sing songs like I will trust in the Lord until I die did she say I'm going to stay on the battlefield until I die but you know what the old saints understood something that we don't necessarily understand in the church of 2020 black white Asian I don't care what you are we don't do this one I'm going to treat everybody right for some reason we got another classification of what everybody means but you're going to hear later on in the text what God means when he says all he means all so she would say I'm going to treat everybody right until I die my grandmother had an understanding that her salvation was not just something for her but her Holy Ghost conviction said you can't go to bed every day wake up every day in the morning and live your life like you going to heaven and you so glad and you cussing out everybody around you and you can't love your neighbor and you can't befriend the person across the street you got to learn how to treat people right I don't care how annoyed you think you are. I feel God right there. I don't care how many times you can prophesy and interpret dreams. I don't care how much scripture you learn. If you can't treat your brother and your sister with love and respect, you have nothing. We're talking about trust issues today. I'm not going to dig too much deeper here. But I will say this. For some of us, we need to heal from ourselves because our trust issues are rooted in our own decisions and our own choices through our lifetime that we have made 
Yes, my brothers and sisters, I understand mistakes happen, but I feel the need to prophesy to this camera right now and tell you sitting at home, you are not defined by the mistake you made, but the mistake was only that. It was a mistake in time, but you are not the mistake. Failure is only a definition of a moment in time, but failure is not your first and last name. So right now, wherever you are, I dare you to just jump off your seat for where you are sitting and just shake that spirit off of you shake that failure off of you shake that mistake off of you knowing that that is not who you are knowing that is not your definition and God calls you favored God calls you blessed don't let that be your issue to keep you from climbing the mountain but keep on climbing if you notice God is pushing you up the hill you might have some scrapes from a mistake you might have a bruise from a fall but I'm encouraging you this morning as you listen to the sound of my voice baby you keep climbing sir you keep going I don't care how many times you gotta repent you keep trying I don't care how many times you gotta say I'm sorry you keep going but don't let your mistakes stop you shout yes I believe God is using this time of isolation to help us for most of us we're in isolation my brothers and sisters and what has happened is your normal that we have built woo, the normal that we have built that we have built to hide our weaknesses that we have built from keeping us from looking into that mirror that we have built with dealing with our circumstance and built with out having to deal with our past and built to, to help us look past the scars and the bruises and help us look past the hurt the pains and the struggles we've had that new normal has ceased that's right you can't use your job right now to distract you you can't use your kids right now to distract you you can't even use church right now to distract you your shopping addiction can't extract you your money addiction can't distract you because right now we all are on a clean playing field uh, sitting at home with ourselves and with God I believe God is using this to our advantage this day uh, because he's taking what the enemy made for evil and he's doing just what he always does he's gonna turn it around for our good uh, he's using this time to allow you to look at the person that is in that mirror uh, and allowing you to say Lord begin to work in me uh, I want to heal from things I've avoided. I want to deal with things I've blocked out. When I come out of this situation, I want to be called a new normal. I don't want to look like I did before I went into isolation, but God make me new. I'm here to encourage you this morning that elevation is calling your name. Growth is calling your name. Bigger is looking for you. There's an upper room experience with your name on it, and it's waiting for you if you believe that shout yes Lord eee. the room and I'm almost done here was full of special people these people had walked with Jesus they watched him die they saw him resurrect and they stood there as he ascended they were in a special place not just physically hear this but also mentally watch this see when you're waiting on the Lord you must keep thoughts in your mind of the amazing things that you've already seen him do okay y'all need me to bring it to reality I'm going to help you see we all have been watching CNN and headline news this week and if you're not careful you'll go to bed angry and you'll wake up angry and you'll quickly forget that this ain't the first time that God has delivered people from a tyrant oh, Jesus this ain't the first time that God has brought a people out from bondage and guess what it won't be the last and so I know it hurts I know it's hard to look at my brothers and sisters I know it's hard to swallow but you got to know that our God is big enough and bad enough to say I brought you out before and I will bring you out again you got to remember the things that God has done and you must also remember to keep people in your circle that also will remind you of the amazing works 
of the Lord. I don't need nobody in my circle that's going to have me flaring up and hitting my triggers and don't know how to calm me down and don't know how to bring me to reality. I need somebody in my circle that's able to remind me when I start tripping and flipping. Ha <laughs> Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute, Davis. Remember when God did X, Y, Z? Wait a minute, Davis. Remember when God did this? Wait a minute, Davis. Remember when God did this? This is why I love your pastor. I'm going to give you a little glimpse into our relationship because I can call him sometimes in some of my hardest times and say, man, da 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 He said, wait a minute, Davis. Remember God did this, this, that, and the third remember Davis God can do this this that and the third that's why you need to look back on your definition of friendship and redefine some of your friends list on Facebook some of them people you like as friends ain't really your friends they just people you saw at the mall and you sent them a friend request but they really ain't your friend because when times get hard and when your mind is hurting and your heart is bleeding you ain't got nobody around you to help you remember you need people in your circle that will bring you back to the greatness of the Lord. So I'm coming to my close, but I want you to see this. In this room, there was no space for doubt. There was no space for wavering. Mm -hmm. Somebody put in the chat, no space. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you the type of room you want to make sure you build. Here, here you go. Are you ready? Are you taking notes? Listen, listen. In this room, notice this. Insecurity, not invited. Competition, not invited. Envy, not invited. Territorialism, not invited. Pride, not invited. Agendas, not invited. But let me tell you what the room was filled with. Faith, invited. Love, invited. Compassion, invited. Expectancy, invited. And peace was invited. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, just like places are getting ready to sit there with all kind of mechanism to check temperatures at the door, you better check the temperature of what's in your room. You better be consistent and you better clean house. If it's supposed to be evicted, kick it out. If it ain't supposed to be in your mind, get rid of it. If it ain't supposed to be in your heart, show it the door. Because the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through for when the day of Pentecost had fully come they were all with one accord and in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind and it filled the house where they were sitting my God ladies and gentlemen I would submit to you today don't fall asleep uh, during this COVID-19 time. Uh, I'm here to tell you uh, there's a prep meeting going on right now uh, in the upper room. Uh, God is doing something uh, in this season. Uh, and with or without us, uh, it is going to happen. Uh, and here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I want to be included in it all. Uh, but in order to be in it all, uh, you got to give all to be in all. Uh, that's right. I want to be in the midst of it all. Uh, I don't know about you but I cannot afford to be shut out of this next move of God I must be included I dare you to look at somebody in your house that's sitting beside you and say the only way you can be in it all is you got to trust God and give God your all because there will be an all with or without us so Lord whatever you're doing in this season if I could sing it I'd sing it right now Lord don't do it without me I don't want to be left out because I wouldn't let go of my issues I want one to be left out huh, because I wouldn't forgive. Huh? I don't want to be left out huh, because I wouldn't forget. Huh? I don't want to be left out huh, because I wouldn't move on. Huh? I don't want to be left out huh, because I wouldn't begin again. Huh? I am forgetting those things huh, that are behind me huh, and I'm reaching for those things huh, which are before me. Huh? I press towards the mark huh, of the prize of the high calling huh, which is in Christ Jesus. Huh? Brothers and sisters, huh, I'm getting ready to take my seat before I leave you on this video I'm here to tell you there is an upper room with your name on it somebody shout yes so the Bible said and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind 
and it filled the house where they were sitting then appeared to them divided tongues as a fire and one sat upon each of them watch this and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking as tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance this is what I love about God watch how he blows this whole thing out of the water I want to leave you with this last thing understand Pentecost did happen and as it happened it hit the room the same but watch God but everyone walked out with a different outcome y'all missed it right there it hit the room the same but it hit everybody with a different outcome Pentecost will hit where you are Pentecost can hit where you are and I declare and I pray even now that as you listen to this service that the fire of the Holy Ghost would fall upon you as you watch this message right now meaning this watch this nobody sounded alike in the room but they were all in the same room nobody did the same thing in the room but they were all hit with the same thing in the room even more than that each one represented in the room had a group of people outside of the room that understood exactly what they were saying oh my god here's the kicker they weren't from the same area know that they look alike but they can understand each other I'm here to leave you with two more things you ready two principles don't you ever change nor adjust your praise nor your story because it don't look like somebody else's and number two don't you ever discredit anyone else's story or their praise because when God makes an all move he extends and makes sure that all is covered all means all meaning all people dark people and light people so to the church I got a message for you today you can write it down you can pin it down you can tweet it if you want to but you better start getting over your color issues that's right you better start getting over your issues and your scrutinies and your wants and your preferences and your prejudices because when God says all he means all he's on the light he's on the dark he's on everybody the same and if you think God is going to include your church your ministry and your word when you got prejudice against somebody that don't look like you you got another thought coming I heard somebody say this God is the only boss that will fire you but continue to let you keep working you go ahead and think the anointing still on you for what you do you go ahead and think prosperity still on you for what you do but one day you're gonna wake up and smell the roses and realize because you got a separate mentality that God has allowed your mentality to separate you from the move that he really is doing he's giving you your own little corner in the sandbox and you think you out there in the country and you on your own little corner I'm here to tell you the move of God is much bigger than these four walls it's much bigger than your state it's much bigger than your region it's much bigger than your territory when God said all flesh he meant all flesh Ah, here's the deal somebody out there is you got to know that your soul and your tongue is the GPS for somebody else's life so the question is what are you going to do about it are you going to be silent when the salvation of somebody else is based upon whether you tell your story whether you share your gift or whether you share your abilities what are you going to do are you going to get over your trust issues and are you going to let it out or are you going to be quiet and miss your elevated place there is an elevated place for you ladies and gentlemen that God is trying to get you to to have your Pentecost moments but in order to get there you have to leave your trust issues at the door how do I know Peter had trust issues he denied him three times while he was dying on the cross but yet Peter finds himself now invited to the upper room I didn't say you weren't going to make mistakes but I'm telling you you got to be big enough to own your mistake and get over your mistake the people that are able to say I'm sorry <laughs> the people that I was able, are able to say I was wrong the people that are able to say forgive me 
are people that can get over trust issues. So as I speak to you today and leave you today, I want to encourage you. Don't let this last move happen. Don't let this next wave come by and you realize it's been done without you. There's a healing, ladies and gentlemen, that God needs to do to our land. The Bible says if our people call by my name will humble themselves and seek my face, I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. So a verse in the song says, Lord, if you're healing and you're healing in this season, <laughs> don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. I want to pray a prayer for you today because I believe this time God is allowing you to pause, reflect, and consider that maybe, just maybe, God is taking what was meant for evil. He's taking this COVID-19 time. He's taking this racial struggle and divide time that we're in and just maybe just possibly you can believe that he's getting ready to turn it around for good maybe he's using this time to retool and redefine and refine his church and I'm talking about not the four walls that I'm standing in here preaching to you today on but I'm talking about the four walls that this church sits inside of. Maybe he's doing and using this time to redefine the boundaries within your heart. So my question today is, can you hear him knocking? Can you hear him calling? Can you hear him talking to you, telling you it's time to reset because there's a mountain, there's an upper room I want to bring you to. I decree and declare over your life this morning that God wants you better. God wants you bigger. God wants you stronger. He wants you to grow. But first, you got to trust him. In Jesus' name. I love you. That's my prayer. God bless you. What a powerful word, trust issues. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to get to my elevated place. And the song that comes to mind right now is Fred Hammond's, I will trust in the name of the Lord. We have to deal with these trust issues in order to get to the destiny that God has in store for us. But before you can get there, you need to give your life to the one who paid it all. So if there's anybody out there today who feels the prompting of the Holy Spirit and you feel like you're called to give your life to Christ on today, I want you to text the number at the bottom of the screen. And when you text that number, someone will call you and we will pray with you a prayer of salvation. And not only that, we want to stay in contact with you so that we can walk you through this discipleship. Before we let you go, we have a couple of really, really quick announcements. On Wednesday night, we will continue our adult Bible study um, on the first Corinthians. And then on next Sunday at 11 a.m., our misfits will have Bible study. So we have Bible study on Wednesday night, and our misfits will have Bible study next Sunday at 11 a.m. God bless you. We love you. We miss you. Love you guys.